What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyB.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to delete all the things in a frame with Kinter and Python. I guess, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at deleting things in a frame sort of automatically. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for a one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right. So super exciting past couple of days here in Vegas, the governor just announced that all non-essential businesses have to close for 30 days. So it is a ghost town here in Vegas, but we are still here making videos, uh, doing Kinter stuff, doing all the things and uh, having a good time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to automatically delete things from inside a frame. A couple of videos ago, we looked at using frames with menus. So if we you know, click here, we get this blue screen. If we go back here and click here, we get the red screen. But then if we go back to the first one, it puts another one up on the screen. And obviously you don't want to do this. You want to delete whatever had been there before and not have to put things back on again on top of everything like we're doing here. So we can keep toggling back and forth. And every time we do, you know, it adds another one of these things and that's just no good. So how do we do this? Well, it's actually really, really easy uh, with Kinter. There's a function called WInfo underscore children. And what it does is it gives you the names of all the children inside your frame, right? So each of these things are children, right? The frame is the parent, the things in the frame are the children. So it doesn't matter what the things are, buttons, labels, you know, other frames, anything at all that's inside your frame, all of those things are children. And with the WInfo underscore children function, you can get the names of those things. Well, once we have the names of them, we can dot destroy each of them. Right. So we don't even need the actual names. We can just loop through W info underscore children and then delete each thing that comes up in the loop and that will do it as well. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got the same code from a couple of days ago when we had the menu frame uh, code that we were working on. I think it was maybe two videos ago. You can check the playlist if you didn't see that video. It should be in the uh, comment section below. So check that out if you need to. I renamed it menu frame two. All right. So it's the same code. It's just I named it number two because this, you know, this is slightly different. And if you remember, we've got our menu things. And when we click on a menu, for instance, cut, we run the edit cut function, which is up here. When we run the edit cut function, it runs this hide all frames function first. And what that does is it hides all the other frames that have been previously called right here. So this is actually this hide all frames is actually a really uh, good place to do this WInfo children stuff that we're going to need to do. So let's just do it right here. So what we need to do is create a loop. And so we want a for loop. And now let's call this widget. When you create a loop, you always name a variable to loop through. And so that variable, I'm going to call it widget. You could call it anything you want. You could call it X, right? You could call it uh, children, anything you want, but we're going to be looping through widgets. So I'm just going to call it widget kind of makes sense to me. So for widget in now we need the name of a frame. So let's use this file new frame as our first one. So in file new frame dot. Now here's where we call the W info underscore children. Spell that right. Function. All right. So this is a, a loop. So we need a colon. Now inside of here, we we need to do whatever we're going to do. Well, we want to destroy every widget that's in our frame, no matter how many there are, there could be 50 things, there could be a 1000 widgets in our frame, we want to destroy them all, well, we could just call widget dot destroy. That's it. So since this is the variable we're creating, this variable gets propagated with whatever is in w info children every time we loop through. So say there's five things in our frame, it will loop through for the, the first time, and whatever the first widget is becomes widget, and then we destroy it loops through again, whatever the second widget is becomes widget again, we destroy it loops through it again, two, three, four, five times till everything in the frame is destroyed. And how do we know how many things are in the frame? Well, from this thing right here, the w info children, this will give us a list of all the widgets in our frame. 
So pretty simple, and that's really all there is to it. Now, one thing to note, this is a tab. I'm not like using the space bar. Python is tab sensitive, so you always have to tab for loops and, and if else statements and things like that. And uh, so that's all there is to it. So we can copy this and let's just paste another one of these in. And so instead of file new frame, let's do edit cut frame. So we wanna do this for all of the frames that we have and we only have two. So let's make a little comment here, uh, loop through all the children in each frame and delete them. Okay, so if we save this and head over here and we're running menu, oh, nope, we want menu frame two.py. So let's see if this works. So we can go here. Then if we go back here, now if we go back, will there, will there be one thing at the top or will there be two? Boom, there's only one. Boom, there's only one. And it doesn't matter how many times we toggle back and forth, all the old ones are getting deleted and uh, that works. So pretty simple. So if you're curious and you wanna see what's actually in this function, we can play around with this. Let's grab the edit one here. And let's just go up to our edit function and let's create another label. Let's call this child label. I don't know, we can call it anything you want. Uh, and it's a label and we wanna put it in edit underscore cut underscore frame. And we want the text to equal, let's just, let's just do that. And now we can child underscore label this thing dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 10 to kind of move it down a little bit. Okay, so now if we run this, pull our thing over and go to edit cut, we see it returns dot exclamation point frame two dot exclamation point label. So it's saying inside this frame, there's a label, which is this thing right here. If we put a button on the screen just to, you know, have some fun with this, uh, let's just call this dummy underscore button. And it's a button. And we want to put it in edit cut frame. And we want the text to say fake and we can dot pack this on the screen and let's give this a pad Y of 10. So we're just putting a button on the screen, it doesn't really do anything, but we don't care, we're just playing around here. And let's see what that looks like. And we come back and edit, cut. Now our WInfo children thing says a label and a button, right? So you may be interested to know how this information is getting returned. We just put this as a label, um, but we could print this onto the screen and you'll see, I believe it returns it as a Python list. So let's try that. Let's come over here and let's just print onto the sort of the terminal screen, this function here. So if we just paste that into our print function here and run this one more time, we can see nothing actually happens now, but when we close this, boom, it will print out the thing. And look at this, it's being, printed or it's been returned as a list, a Python list because of the square brackets. And if we copy this, let's copy this and look at it in our sublime text. So it's maybe a little easier to read. It's returning these things. So a label and a button. So it's a button object, it looks like. And each of these things are separated by commas, as you would expect in a list. So we have see one label, two button, three other label, because this thing itself is a label. So very, very interesting. So we could, you know, if you wanted to destroy a certain thing, you could destroy the zeroth item, but we could print the zeroth item. So let's, let's come over here to our frame thing. And if we put, uh, zero, the zeroth item, the first thing that should return just label, right? So if we save this and run it, maybe, I've never tried this before. No, we're getting a, oh, we gotta delete this whole thing. Let's just comment this out here. There we go. Now, if we run this, 
give it another try. So edit cut, it's just returning the zeroth item, which was a label. If we want to do the second item, which is this button, we could pull up, let's see here, the second item, which is one in a list, because lists start at zero. If we save this and run it, it should return just the button. Boom, button, very, very cool and uh, kind of interesting. So uh, we're still printing out the list to the screen. We can <laughs> get rid of that if we want. Let's see where'd that go right here, looks like. Let me tab this over. Okay, so that's how to destroy things in a frame. Uh, you know, use the WInfo children function and then just loop through it and destroy everything that we find in that function and uh, pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which I really appreciate and really, really helps the channel out. So please do that. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.